Hey everybody. Um, today I thought I'd do my first sort of unboxing video. Um, it's going to be um, a little bit old school, but um, if you're a Sega fan, it might be a little bit of an obscure thing that you weren't aware of uh, that Sega supported actually, but um, still could be inter interested in if you're uh, into the whole uh, sort of portable technology and gaming technology and things like that. So, what am I unboxing? Well, um, as a special treat, I got my hands on a N-Gage, an original N-Gage, actually. I haven't opened this one yet. Um, it's not brand new. It's, um, I think, previously used um, or lightly used for sure. Um, but um, I've always sort of wanted one of these. Um, mainly because of uh, the fact that Sega uh, developed games for it. Um, I didn't work on any games for the system, but uh, we released a, a few of them. And uh, for those who don't know, um, the N-Gage is sort of a hybrid phone gaming system. And this was, you know, long before the iPhone and sort of smartphones kind of took off. Symbian OS was quite popular, especially uh, for Nokia phones. And um, you know, Nokia saw that a lot of people were gaming on the go, right? Uh, the Game Boy, original Game Boy was out, hugely successful. Um, other systems had sort of come out and there was this trend to be able to go gaming, uh, you know, after you leave the house and it's not attached to the TVs anymore. So feeling that they had an opportunity to do this, plus the sort of smarts from their phone development background, um, they, they wanted to come up with a Game Boy Advance killer, or at least competition for the Game Boy Advance, and that's what sparked the N-Gage. And um, the N-Gage was, was originally announced way back in November of 2002, and came out actually on shelves about a year later, I think October 2003. And, um, you know, it's an interesting piece of hardware, um, you know, you have to appreciate that they tried to do it, but the end result wasn't necessarily as great as anyone hoped it would be. So, um, you know, following the original design, this is the original N-Gage right here. Uh, following its uh, sort of lackluster reception, Nokia went back to the drawing board and created another uh, piece of hardware called the uh, N-Gage QD, which came out in 2004. So um, that also, unfortunately, while it fixed a lot of the issues which I'll talk about when I unbox this, um, it didn't address things enough. And um, that continued also on in a very lackluster sort of performance. And uh, Nokia eventually ended up sort of abandoning their whole hardware plans for this. So I'll talk about that a little bit more, but let's get into the unboxing. Um, so this is a T-Mobile Engage. Um, it is actually when they released uh, $299, or basically $300. So a decent uh, amount of money for sure, especially when you're talking about some of the cheaper Nokia phones that are out on the market. So definitely a, a hefty investment and certainly way more than what anyone was paying for a Game Boy. Uh, at the time or other handheld gaming system. So, um, you know, um, definitely a, sort of a hard sell, but, um, you know, this one is for T-Mobile. So let's get into it, okay? All right, um, just the box. Okay, so what you get inside is you've got the engage right there uh, on a big plastic sort of clamshell case. So let's open that. I'll set the phone aside and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but let's go ahead and open the box and see what's what surprises await inside. All right, let's see here. We've got a thank you for purchasing the Engage kind of card from Nokia. Makes you feel all warm inside that they uh, are appreciating your purchase of what they call the mobile game deck. So they didn't call it a phone or, or a uh, you know, portable gaming device or anything. They actually called it the Mobile Game Deck, which is an interesting name. Might have been a problematic in marketing for the device, that's for sure. Okay, we've got a, um, I guess, a quick start guide, which lets you kind of jump into the um, setting things up quickly. The Engage has a lot of buttons, so um, it's probably um, ideal that they had a quick start guide because uh, even sort of bringing up menus and, and selecting options in the menu was a little bit problematic. All right, we have a um, Get More From Life Nokia Welcome Guide. So 
Um, this has a couple different things in it. It also has a monthly service plan detail. So back then, um, basically which was valid through 2004, you could get monthly unlimited access to the Engage wireless gaming system services for $9.99 a month, and um, which seems like a pretty good deal, though I wonder how much the, the fast the bandwidth are, but you're able to compete against other players for high scores, you could upload your own game clips and share them with other players, you could download cheats and also download strategy guides, so they're actually doing some innovative stuff there. Especially the uploading of your own game clips and sharing them with other players. That's pretty uh, advanced for the time and certainly not something that Nintendo or anyone else was doing uh, at that period in time, for sure. So kudos to Nokia for that. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive, actually. All right, we have a Nokia Engage Games catalog, I guess from January 2003, which um, kind of shows you, I guess at the time, all the games that are currently available. Um, there's some Sega games in here such as uh, Sonic N and Super Monkey Ball, right? We always seem to bring Super Monkey Ball to every every platform, right? At least uh, back in the day. If, if there was a portable device, gaming device that could play it, we released Super Monkey Ball out there and had a lot of success with it actually. Um, people love Super Monkey Ball. Um, it's very easy to get into, very easy to play, um, you know, nice variety in the levels, so it sort of made sense. Um, but uh, we certainly released a lot of them. All right, moving on. We've got the user guide, which is actually quite thick um, for a mobile device. And it's all in English. It's not even like they had multiple languages. This, this sucker is uh, mucho thicko. So, um, you know, obviously this device did a lot of things. Um, even had Bluetooth connections. So... Um, Potentially explosive atmospheres. That sounds um, interesting. And a warning for if you have pacemakers. Um, minimum, minimum of separation of six inches to be maintained between the, higher, uh, the wireless game deck and a pacemaker to avoid potential interference. So good thing to note. For those of you out there with pacemakers, do not be holding end gauges up to your chest. Okay? I might have saved someone's life right there. So we got the user guide. We have a software and guides disc, um, which has an audio manager, a PC suite. So basically a software to transfer stuff to the end gauge, probably music, MP3s, videos, thing, games maybe. Though games also game on cartridges, but um, I think you could also download and transfer uh, games using a standard like um, micro USB connection. So valuable disc there. We've got a, oh, I guess it's already been punched out, a T-Mobile SIM card, which you sort of need for the, obviously, the phone aspects of the N-Gage, back on the old school T-Mobile GSM network. Good old days. We have your charger. What's interesting, though, it's not a USB charger. It's still got a classic... Um, power plug uh, input, almost like a, a Genesis. But I um, wonder why they did not stick with a micro USB, or is it mini USB? Mini USB, I guess. Uh, micro USB wasn't invented at the time. But uh, because the device has one for transferring stuff, but they decided to keep with a traditional power uh, plug. So, hmm, that's interesting. All right, we've got, of course, the necessary battery, which, um, I wonder how many milliamps this is. It's 3.7 volts. Um, it doesn't say how many milliamps. I guess people didn't really care about that back then. Actually, I don't know how long these devices lasted. That's a pretty small battery, so I'm expecting that it didn't really last that long when you're playing games especially uh, visual intensive ones, maybe like uh, Tomb Raider, etc. A pretty small battery. All right, we're getting to the end here. We've got a headphone jack with two plugs, one labeled HDD2. I wonder why it has two plugs. 
that's interesting. Um, hmm. Headphone jack has two plugs. Oh, there are two plugs on the Nokia. I'm gonna have to do some little research there because um, I'm wondering why it had two uh, one eighth millimeter headphone jacks for the headphones. That's pretty interesting. Uh, you don't generally see that. There must be a reason for it. Okay, and last but not least, you have your uh, USB chart. Oh, no, not a USB chart. Oh yeah, it also has a transfer cable, I guess. That makes it even stranger that they didn't use this to charge the system. But um, it's there as a transfer cable, as well as what looks like a headphone uh, extension cable. Because uh, it has the female headphone jack, and then it's got the male jacks on the other side. So it's probably just to extend the length of the uh, headphones. Alright, so let's go to the actual hardware. So here it is. Here is the um, fabled Nokia N-Gage, the original one. So the QD is shaped differently. Now, um, as you can see, there's tons of buttons on this system. It's not most, uh, you know, it's not certainly the most ergonomically designed or intuitively designed system there is. And you notice that it's sort of shaped like a taco. And, uh, you know, a lot of people made fun of it because of this. But the main thing that came out of this, that the term that uh, people threw around a lot was side talking. And so you'll notice here, if you can see it, right here is the earpiece for the phone. So when you talk, you don't talk like a normal phone like this. You talk on the side like this. And that's where the term side talking came in. And everyone sort of looked ridiculous at doing this. It was sort of a very bad design in general for a device. But the that's basically where the phrase side talking came from in relation to the end gauge. Now, um, the other sort of fault for this design, and, I, and I'm shocked that they did not um, think of this or change it around before they released it is the sort of difficulty in how you change games. So games got released on cartridges. They look like almost like SD cartridges. And basically anytime you changed a game, this is what you had to do. You had to open up the back and you'll see the inside here. Now right here is where the game cart slides in. Now this is the battery. So not only when you changed a game did you have to remove the covering, you'd have to remove the battery and then be able to slide in the game, which is the most sort of idiotic design that you could possibly have, right? I mean, I don't know how someone designs something where you basically, in, in order to really get a game in there, you have to remove the battery. Not, uh, not very smart at all. Um, so uh, let's uh, put in a battery and we'll see if this thing powers up. I'm excited. I actually don't know if this if this works or not, so we'll do this together. Okay, so I've got the battery in, and then I'm going to slide this um, cover back on. Okay, and let's power this up and see. Oh, yes, we have something. There's no Kia logo. See what the boot time is for this thing. Engage logo. Oh, that's actually that's actually pretty fast. Oh. Doesn't have a SIM card. What was that like? 10, 15 seconds? Um so that's what the uh main screen looks like for it. And um you know, you got you've got a D-pad, which is good for the gaming. But then you got your numeric game, your numeric pad here, which is a little bit cumbersome because there's select buttons that are sort of highlighted here, and then you got to use these buttons down here for back and menu selection. And then of course you've got your uh, call and hang up, um, which are separate buttons for uh, some reason. Again, not the greatest uh, design device for sure. So on this side, you've got a um, USB for, I guess, the I guess the PC transfer, right, for files. And then you've got the plug for charging it. Um, you've got 
I don't know what that is. You got something there. I have no idea what that is. And then of course you've got the two headphone jacks um, for the system, which again, I need to look up because I'm curious. If anyone knows why there's two headphone jacks and wants to post in the comments, uh, do that. Um, I will look it up as well. I'm just curious why it has two, two headphone jacks. And then on this side, you've got the power button, and then of course the uh, earpiece and microphone setup. So I don't, I don't think this came with a game though, so I'm kind of screwed. I wonder if the demo disc, the demo disc, let me see. Oh, okay, there's a game on the demo disc, excuse me, there's a game on the demo disc, so I will try to install that and see how that is. But unfortunately, I don't have any games. Um, for those who are wondering from the Sega side, the games that we released for it, we had um, Puyo Pop, which is, of course, the classic puzzle game. We had Sonic N, so we did have a Sonic game for this. I unfortunately have not played the Sonic game. I might need to look for it online. It's probably pretty rare at this point. But I have played Super Monkey Ball, and that played okay. So we have Sonic N, Super Monkey Ball. Um, we had Virtua Tennis. And I think later on, it's not in this um, guide, but I think we also had Virtua Cop and Sega Rally. So we had like five or six games on this system, which is definitely more than any publisher I can think of, even Activision. I mean, Activision had Tony Hawk on this, and um, THQ had some games like Red Faction, and Gameloft had Rayman, but definitely Sega was the big supporter of the N-Gage. And, um, you know, in the end, um, the N-Gage never really took off. It sold maybe three million units worldwide during its run of a few years, two or three years. And once it kind of ended, um, they decided to drop the hardware, obviously, when it ended, but continue the Engage platform. So they revised the SDK and the tools, and rather than be an actual hardware, it was sort of a um, kind of a game development um, sort of process and SDK that would work on a large variety of Symbian phones from Nokia and other uh, people, other manufacturers who were making Symbian phones as well. So it was an attempt to sort of take the work that had been done on this hardware and instead of making more hardware, kind of make a platform that everyone could develop for. And um, interestingly enough, when they did um, continue that um, engage and name only as far as software development, um, they were uh, located in the same building in San Francisco that Sega used to be in, which is... Um, the Townsend address. So it's the big building. Now um, Zynga is in that building. Uh, they pretty much own all that building after we left. But during our time there, before we moved uh, a few blocks down in San Francisco, um, Nokia was there as well. So it was kind of interesting. I'm not sure if that's why we ended up developing uh, a lot of games for the system, but uh, I found it kind of interesting that um, they continued to work there uh, in that same building as Sega. So there you have it. Um, that is sort of my unboxing of the Nokia N-Gage. Let me know if you have any other questions about it. Um, as a sort of fan of just Sega and just kind of gaming hardware in general, I love being able to have and add things like this to my collection. So this is a great find. I just need to get some of the Sega games for it as well. Obviously, if anyone has any that they want to send me out of the love of their heart, uh, definitely let me know. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. Otherwise, I'll look for them on eBay. So um, thanks for listening again. Hope you enjoyed that and I look forward to more unboxing in the weeks and months ahead. All right, take care. Bye.